If you want to make a game that is interesting, usually what developers will add is some sort of gimmick that makes the game stand out from all the other many video games that are developed today. One of my favorite gimmicks in the game is the portal gun in the portal series. Sconders, for the most part, in every new game brings a new type of gimmick to change up the formula. A lot of people call these new sconders that promote the gimmick introduced in each game gimmick landers. So today I wanted to look at these gimmick landers and see what they bring to each sconders game. Alright, so this is weird. Unfortunately, the first Skylanders game, Skylanders Spires Adventure, doesn't really have any gimmick landers. All the Skylanders in this game are what later games eventually would deem as core Skylanders, which are basically just regular Skylanders that have nothing to do with the gimmick of the game and really could be placed in any Skylanders game and it wouldn't change how much the game is played. I understand why this is, however, since the majority of the game wasn't focused on the gimmick Skylanders since this was the first Skylanders game and the main gimmick was just the fact that the game itself was toys to life. This was the first game, so it didn't have anything to build upon, you know? Does this make every single Skylanders Spires Adventure a gimmick lander because they're all showing off the new gimmick of Toys to Life? I don't believe so. Usually gimmick landers, while all looking very different, all have one defining factor that makes them a part of a specific group of Skylanders. So we'll be skipping Spires Adventure in this video, so let's move on to the Skylanders game that first brings us gimmick landers. Alright, so Skylanders Giants brings us the first group of gimmick landers in the series, and surprise, it is the Giants. This team consists of 8 Skylanders, one of each element. Tree Rex, the life giant, comes in the starter pack, and personally, he is my favorite out of these Giants. The other Giants are Thumpback, the water giant, Bouncer, the tech giant, Crusher, the earth giant, Ninjini, the magic giant, Hothead, the fire giant, Eyebrow, the undead giant, and Swarm, the air giant. The things that make the giants different from cores is, well, they're big, and they were actually teased in Spire's Adventure, but back then they were called the Elder Elementals and were said to have the power of light and darkness within their flesh, which might refer to their light core characters. Giants are more powerful than regular Skonders. Core Skonders need to use a bomb to destroy certain walls in a level, but giants can just use their bare hands to destroy the wall themselves. When I was a kid, I thought it was really cool that these Skonders could just get through obstacles by destroying them, when in the first game you needed like a bomb or dynamite to get past certain obstacles. Giants can also pick up boulders to destroy parts of the map or defeat enemies too. There's just something so satisfying about picking up a huge boulder out of the ground and throwing it at some enemies. Giants can also just defeat chompies by walking on them, which is really funny, but one of the more recognizable things about the giants is the feats of strength. The feats of strength vary from using a chain name of islands, lifting up big logs, or pushing giant rock walls. Whenever you complete a feat of strength, there is usually some sort of treasure hiding behind the area. You could say these are basically elemental gates, for giants, since only giants can do them. Out of the 16 chapters in Giants, a feat of strength appears in 10 of them. Chapters 2, 5, and 9 all have two feats of strengths. These feats of strengths are cool, but after a while, they kind of lose their magic, because you just do the same feats of strengths over and over again, just in different areas. One last thing the giants can do is jump from high places and smash holes in the ground, exposing secret areas, usually with treasures in them. It's pretty cool, although they don't show up as much as you think they would. Honestly, Giants are just fun to play as. They're bigger than the average Skylander, which does kind of get ruined in later games since Trap Masters and Senseis are just as big as them, but in the context of just Skylanders Giants, they are awesome. They move kind of clunky and they're slow, but being a giant is just really cool. You get to move big stuff around like it's nothing, and for kids, which was a target audience, it was a genius move. I mean, they are Skylanders, but bigger. How can you not like this? And with the introduction of Lycor characters, the Giants also light up in certain parts, and while some look better with lights than others, they do bring some intrigue to the actual characters, and the giants are also the only gimmick landers to be light core, which I think is absurd. Some later Skylanders would have looked amazing being light core. We might as well talk about the variants as well for giants too. There are four giants with in-game variants, those being Tree Rex with Gnarly Tree Rex, Legendary Bouncer, Granite Crusher, and Scarlet and Genie. Giants goes four for four on variants. They're all awesome. However, Giants also has three chase variants, two of them being Eyebrow for some reason. Eyebrow has a pumpkin eyebrow variant and an iridescent eyebrow variant. The pumpkin one is cool, but it would have been real nice if it actually appeared in the game. And the iridescent one is a nice chase variant. And then we also got Sparkle Hothead. He's all right. You know what? Overall, Giants eight out of 10 gimmick landers. Good job, guys. Alright, when people think 
of Skinder's gimmicks, probably the most known and probably the most creative one ever is found in Swap Force with the Swappers. I mean, what a crazy idea, being able to pull apart Skinder's tops and bottoms and putting them together in different formations is so creative. I still can't believe they made this work. Unlike Giants with there being one gimmick lander per element, we now have two gimmick landers per element. So there are 16 Swappers in this game. And let's talk about them real quick. In this game, we have Trap Shadow, Hoot Loop, Freeze Blade, Washbuckler, Spy Rise, Magna Charge, Doomstone, Rubble Rouser, Blast Zone, Fire Kraken, Rattle Shake, Night Shift, Stink Bomb, Gorilla Drilla, Free Ranger, and Boom Jet. Something I will say about the Swappers is the one fall I think of the Swappers is that usually their best form is their original form. So for the most part at least, I don't find myself swapping them all that much since they usually don't get any better than their original forms. However, one swap I do use a lot is Magna Shift, which is the top of Magna Charge and the bottom of Night Shift. I actually use life just bottom for most of my combos since with his bottom you get extra lives But with his extra lives and teleport abilities and magna charges gun This really becomes a real deadly combo if you ask me Okay, now when it comes to the game There are very interesting things swappers can do in the first two games There are elemental gates that you could access if you had a scounder of the corresponding element in swap force There are still some regular elemental gates But now they're also dual elemental gates which need to use a swapper combo with the elements on the gate to get access to it I mean you also can just use two scounders with the elements you needed to but that's no fun it is kind of weird that there are just two different types of elemental gates in the game but i like the addition because it gets you to use the swappers and actually swap them something i forgot to mention is that each swapper has their own sub element called their movement type which isn't really tied to their original element for example washbuckler is a water element and spirals is a tech element but they both have the climb move set type in swap force there are swap force zones which are challenges for specific movement types there are eight movement types which are climb rocket dig bounce sneak speed, spin, and teleport. You can use a swap combo to enter these zones. Just the bottom of the swapper have to be the same as the movement type for the zone. In the climb swap zones, you get put on a platform with a top view and you have to climb up this platform while dodging obstacles. The rocket zone can be accessed by blast zone and boom jets bottom halves. And this one you have to fly through hoops in a certain amount of time. You can gain extra time in some parts and have to dodge obstacles. You can do the dig zones by using rubble rouser and gorilla driller bottoms. In these areas, you go underground and the mine have to find three crystals that are buried before the time runs out. To access the bounce zones, you must use either Fire Kraken or Rattleshake's bottom half. In this zone, you have to bounce on platforms and have to avoid falling into the void below you, while also having to destroy three balloons with Chaos's face on it by jumping on it. In the sneak zones, you need the bottom halves of either Trap Shadow or Stink Bomb. In these areas, you get sent to some secure fortress with spotlights around and have to avoid being seen by them by sneaking past them to get to the fortress self-destruct button and pressing it. My personal favorite zone is the speed zone and can be done with either Magic Magnet Charge or Freeze Blade's bottom half. And in the speed zone, you get put on a large track with a lot of obstacles and you have to reach the finish line of the track before the time ends. The spin zones are accessed by either Free Ranger or Doomstone's bottom half. The main goal of this area is to spin and destroy obstacles that push you and eventually destroy the last obstacle, which is a statue of chaos without falling into the void below. And finally, teleport zones. You can enter these zones with Hoot Loop or Nightshift's bottom. In teleport zones, you get placed in an area with multiple platforms and need to reach a certain object in each stage, but some platforms can disappear and some can damage you. You need to collect nine objects in this zone to complete it and without a doubt the teleport zones are the hardest ones to complete in all the swap force. Something interesting about the swappers is their upgrade paths. Usually a Skander has two upgrade paths to choose from with three upgrades on each path but swappers have two upgrades in each upgrade path because you upgrade their tops and bottoms independently. These are the only Skanders in the series with only two available upgrades and an upgrade path. The swap force also has way more variant characters than Giants did with nine in-game variants. Those variants are Dark Blast Zone, Dark Wash Buckler, Legendary Free Ranger, Legendary Night Shift, Nitro Freeze Blade, Nitro Magnet Charge, Jade Fire Kraken, Enchanted Hoot Loop, and Quick Draw Rattle Shake. There are also five Chase Variant Swappers with Chrome Gold Fire Kraken, Color Shift Wash Buckler, Copper Silver Trap Shadow, Silver Gold Stink Bomb, and Gold Copper Doomstone. I think the idea of some of the Chase Variant Swappers was to get them all and then swap them so they would match color since their base versions of the chase variants do not match colors. The Swap Force was a really imaginative idea that showed even in the third year of Skander's development, there was still a bunch of creativity floating around in this series. The Swap Force has a 2013 were probably the best gimmick landers in the entire series. There was double the amount of Swappers than Giants, and you could do a whole lot more with the Swap Force than with the Giants. And while I may not use Swap Force as a main ability often, even the Swappers by themselves are pretty good Skanders with some very interesting designs. 9 out of 10 gimmick landers, good job guys. 
Trapping has the most gimmick landers in the game so far with 18 gimmick landers thanks to the new light and dark elements brought into the game. This time around the gimmick landers are the trap masters and are basically the police of Skylands. These guys trap a lot of bad guys and put them in a cloudcracker prison before it was destroyed but now they're back to round up the bad guys once again. The trap team is made out of trap masters and there are two trap masters in each element and one trap master in the light and dark elements. Trap masters wield weapons made of a substance called Traptanium. Real creative naming, guys. And all of these Traptanium weapons are extremely different. Shortcut the Undead Trap Master has a giant scissor, while Blaster Mine has a helmet with five Traptanium shards on them. So there's a wide range for these weapons. Anyway, let's look at the roster of Trap Masters very quickly. In the Water Element, there is Snapshot with a Bone Arrow and Lobster or two Shuriken type weapons. In the Fire Element, there is Wildfire who has a giant shield and Kaboom with a big cannon. The Life Element has Bushwhack uses an axe and tough luck with two war blades. The undead element has Crypt King with a giant sword and shortcut with some big scissors. In the magic element there's Blastamine with a helmet that has five Traptanian shards on them and Enigma with a magic staff. The tech element has gear shit that uses a big gear that can split in two and Jawbreaker with two Traptanian fists. The air trap masters are Gusto who uses a boomerang and Thunderbolt who wields a storm sword. The earth element has Wallop and who uses two Traptanian hammers and Headrush who wears Traptanian horns. The the new light element trap master is nightlight who uses a light scimitar and finally the dark element trap master is nightmare who wields a dark flamberge however i do have a complaint when it comes to these trap team figures they are as big if not bigger than a lot of the giant characters both in real life and in game which really diminishes the giants one gimmick of you know being giant However, other than that, when it comes to the designs, I love the Trap Masters, all very unique and fun designs. When it comes to in-game things that only Trap Masters can do, they can break Traptanium shards around the levels. Occasionally in a level, there will be a giant shard of Traptanium, either hiding an area behind it or under it, which can have treasures in them, or even trappable villains. Because Traptanium is the strongest substance in all of Skylands, only Traptanium can break Traptanium, so no regular Skylander can destroy them. Trap Master weapons will also glow when Traptanium is nearby. Speaking of Trap Master weapons, Trap Masters do significantly more damage to trappable villains than regular Skylanders. Their weapons get power boost, and once again, their weapons will glow when fighting a trappable villain. I like these little attention to details, and it does make sense that their weapons do more damage since they've already captured all these villains before. However, there's something more controversial that is exclusive for Trap Masters. Throughout the first three games, any Skylander, no matter what, could open up elemental gates. If there was, let's just say, a fire elemental gate, a core Skander could open it, a giant could open it, and a swapper could open it. But now in Trap Team, only Trap Masters can open elemental gates, which are now called Traptanium elemental gates. So now you'd have to collect at least one Trap Master of each element to unlock each elemental gate instead of already being able to unlock elemental gates with the Skanders from previous games like every other game. And with there being two new elements in this game, you'd have to collect at least 10 Trap Masters to be able to fully complete the main game. From what I've heard, this was actually like a last minute decision, and I have no idea why they did this, probably to make more money, I'm not sure. With only Trap Masters being able to open up elemental gates, cores were 100% useless in this game. Core Skanders have already been overshadowed by Gimmick Landers since Giants, but at least they could still open elemental gates, but now, nope, they are 100% completely useless. Anyway, let's get to the variant Trap Master figures. There are seven Trap Masters in game variants, those being Dark Wildfire, Dark Snapshot, Winterfest Lobstar, Nitro Crip King, Nitro Headrush, Legendary Jawbreaker, and Legendary Bushwhack. When it comes to the Chase variants, there are three, all being Crystal Chase variants. There is Crystal Tough Luck, Shortcut, and Thunderbolt. Something interesting is the Trap Master weapons do not change color no matter what variant they are. This is more of a fun fact, but the Trap Master logo is found somewhere on each figure, so each figure has a Trap Master logo on them somewhere. When it comes to the design of the characters, the Trap Masters might just be my favorite out of all gimmick landers. They are to look awesome without the weapons, but having those huge Traptanium Crystal weapons alongside them makes them look even more incredible. Them being the only viable Skanders in this game and completely pushing core Skanders to the side does suck, but that still doesn't diminish the fact that Trap Masters are great gimmick landers along with the game's gimmick being cool too. I'm gonna give the gimmick landers here a 9 out of 10. Supercharger saw what Trap Team did to Core Skanders and said, we can do better. That is because there are no Core Skanders in Superchargers, only Gimmick Landers. Okay, we're in new territory. There's never been a Skanders game so far only consisting of Gimmick Landers, so let's see how it goes. The Gimmick Landers in this game are the Superchargers, and there are 18 Superchargers, which means 18 new Gimmick Landers. 
Well, kind of. Eight of the 18 superchargers are old characters brought back, those being Roller Brawl, Trigger Happy, Eruptor, Popfish, Jet Vag, Gilgrunt, Terrafit, and Stuff Elf. But unlike previous games, there are not series variants. The older games like Giants, if an old character was brought back, they would get a repose and a new move. But for the most part, they remained the same Skander. But these new characters they brought back are completely reimagined from the ground up with new designs and new movesets. They are different enough to be considered different Skylanders. I love this idea on how to bring back old characters. The only part I don't like is that they brought back Roller Brawl instead of Chop Chop, but that's more of a personal vendetta than something to actually complain about. The actual new characters in this game are Splat, Astro Blast, Stormblade, Thrillipede, High Volt, Nightfall Fiesta, Dive Clop, Smash Hit, and Spitfire. All these characters, like I already mentioned, are the Superchargers, and this team all have their own vehicles they can use to defeat evil in Skylands. Their vehicles are separating the categories by land, sea, and sky vehicles. If I'm being honest, I always thought this gimmick was kind of weak just based off the last two games with swappers and trappable villains and now we just have cars but this video isn't about the gimmick it is about the gimmick landers so what can superchargers do well each supercharger like i said has their own vehicle powered by a ripped engine and when you pair a supercharger with their vehicle their vehicle gets a power boost and a new look the superchargers are also the only sconders that can customize their vehicles other sconders cannot customize vehicles i've heard some people complain that not every sconder can customize vehicle but i'm actually okay with it it makes sense that the only sconders experienced with vehicles are the only ones that can customize them. The superchargers also have their own type of elemental gates, sort of. There are supercharged zones where only superchargers can access, except these are not themed after an element or the superchargers really, they're just more like extensions of the level that you're currently playing, but only the superchargers can gain entry in them. This doesn't really have anything to do with the actual game, but the superchargers are the first group of sconders to have new bases. Instead of the old sconders bases that just have the elemental theme on the base, these new bases have the element theme with the rift engine that has their element logo on them too. And the final noteworthy thing about the superchargers is they are the first group of gimmick landers to have guest stars. These guest stars are Hammer Slam Bowser and Turbo Charge Donkey Kong. And these characters unfortunately only work on Nintendo consoles, which kind of sucks because I feel like the majority of people that played superchargers didn't play it on a Nintendo console. However, speaking about both those characters, they both have in-game variants and superchargers has a whole bunch of in-game variants with 14. Those 14 variants consist of Dark Bowser, Dark Donkey Kong, Dark Spitfire, Dark Super Shot Stealth Elf, Excited Thrill Power Blue Splat, Power Blue Double Dare Trigger Happy, Steel Plated Smash Hit, Legendary Hurricane Jet Vac, Legendary Astro Blast, Legendary Bone Bash Roller Brawl, Frightful Fiesta, Mistletoe Dive Clops, and Birthday Bash Big Bubble Pop Fizz. Superchargers really outdid themselves with these endgame variants, a lot of new variant types and all of them look really nice. However, there are way less chase variants in Superchargers with only four. Those chase variants in the game are Patina High Volt, Patina Lava Lance Eruptor, Bronze Bone Bash Roller Brawl, and Snow Bright Storm Blade, which was an employee exclusive actually. Honestly, I think superchargers are probably the weakest gimmick landers so far. Their character designs don't really have a gimmick. I mean, the giants are big and light up, the swappers can swap tops and bottoms, and the trap masters have huge giant crystal weapons. The superchargers don't really have anything on their characters that makes them unique from any other sconders. They probably also have the least in-game powers compared to other gimmick landers too. The superchargers are a fun group of sconders, but when it comes to being gimmick landers, they just don't do as good as a job as previous gimmick landers. 6 out of 10. When I first saw this video, I was originally for the Imaginator section, gonna say that the senseis were the gimmick landers for Imaginators, but then I realized I was a big dumb idiot because Imaginators are the gimmick landers for Imaginators and not the senseis, which makes this section a bit harder to write about since Imaginators aren't really set sconders because you make your own Imaginators. But Imaginators do have some interesting things about them. Well, first of all, the main gimmick of Imaginators is that you create them. When you first put a creation crystal on the portal, you get 10 different battle classes and you can make your Imaginator with those set 10 different battle classes. There is a Bazooka class where the Imaginator has a giant cannon. There is a Bowslinger Imaginator class that sees him using a bow and arrow as a weapon. The Brawler class, which the Imaginator will use their fist and some sort of brass knuckle type of weapon. The Knight class uses swords as weapons. The Ninja class not only lets it use Ninja Stars, but it's also one of the only two Imaginator classes that change the appearance of the Imaginator because ninjas do not have chests in this game. Quickshot Imaginators use two guns. The Sentinel class uses double-edged swords. Smasher Imaginators use big clubs to smash things with. If your Imaginator is the 
the Sorcerer class, the 11 Magic Staff. And finally, the Swashbuckler class, which is the other class that changes the appearance of your Magitor. They use two swords and the legs get replaced with tails. Personally, I've always thought that this creation system was pretty stellar. You can pretty much make whatever you want. The only problem is the attack system is pretty limited. You can pick between two attacks for your primary attack and pick between four attacks for your elemental attack. And your third attack depends on how many senseis are in each battle class because the third move is called a secret technique, which you can only get by using senseis because the senseis will teach the imaginators your third move, which is called a secret technique. And when it comes to the soul gem, you only get one option for a soul gem move. When it comes to the figures, they technically are light cores, but I wouldn't say they're light core Skyliners since Toys Rob never deemed them light core characters, but the creation crystals do light up when you put them on the portal. The way Imaginers level up is tied to the other Skyliners in the game, the Senseis. The more Senseis you have, the more levels the Imaginators can level up to. Each new Sensei gives you one extra level. You can't use double Senseis though, so if you have two keen pins, those two keen pins will only give you one level because you can't use multiple different Senseis to level up. All the regular Senseis plus variant Senseis give us the level 64 as the cap for Imaginators, which means if you have a lot of Senseis, Imaginators easily become the most overpowered Skylanders of all time. I mean, having a Skylander that can go past level 30 is just so unfair. In previous games, certain Skylanders of certain elements would be more powerful in particular zones, but now there's actually a zone where Imaginators are more powerful, and during Doomlander boss fights and the Chaos boss fight, Imaginators deal more damage than regular Skylanders to them, which which is somewhat like how trap masters work against trappable villains and trap team. But honestly, that's really it when it comes to imaginators. The funny thing is the non-gimmick landers, the senseis, which don't feel like non-gimmick landers just because they actually have a name for their team, have a lot more things to do in the game like the sensei gong challenge, sky chi power-ups, and sensei realms. But they are not the gimmick landers for this game since the gimmick is creating skanders and imaginators are the ones you can create making the Imaginators the gimmick landers for this game. But I also wouldn't say that makes the Sensei's core Skylanders either. I guess they fall into this gray area when it comes to what Skylanders they are, because basically in every other Skylanders game, the Senseis would have been the gimmick landers of the game. I don't think people actually appreciate the Senseis, man, because these guys are the guys that trained the Skylanders. They are the best of the best when it comes to Skylanders, and they aren't even the main focus of the game. Oh well, the Imaginators are great gimmick landers, probably the most gimmicky of the gimmick landers too. Being able to create your own Skylanders is obviously the best gimmick in all of Skylanders. Skylanders, and even though this was the last gimmick of the series, the Imaginators don't really feel rushed thanks to the refined creation system. Honestly, 10 out of 10 Imaginators are 10 out of 10s. Good gimmick landers. You know, I feel like this is pretty different from my regular videos. I feel like my regular videos have a pretty, like, defined theme. Like, I don't feel like gimmick landers are a defined term that everybody knows in the Skylanders community, but honestly, whatever. I know this is probably not as long as my previous video because my previous video was an hour long very long i feel like this video is probably going to land anywhere from like 15 to 20 minutes but anyway guys hope you guys have enjoyed this video about talking about gimmick landers and thank you guys for watching